That's true. Good enough. We're relegated to the old man. Yeah. Told on me after the old food. Yeah. He's like, oh, we just saw. You want to write me? No business. And people may have stuff with inconsistency statement. Yeah, yeah. I've got to remember that he's a counselor. No, it's just the I can show you. I only saw three things. This is that thing over there. Blue biscuit coming up next month. Oh, he's got you over there. Hey, good to see you, No, I'm with you. Oh, hey. Well, how are you? Doing well. Nothing is here. Just me here. Same seat. Can I uh, last call for you? Yeah. Easy, man. It's pretty easy. Not too sweet. You think? I think so. Right. That's good. All depends on you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the city and the county as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any of the issues that are here before us this evening. If you wish to speak on any of the agenda items this evening, I encourage you to please sign up uh, to my left on the table. You'll note that there are uh, specifics on each of the items that'll be in front of you, and when we get to that case, we'll be invited to come speak in the microphone. When you do come and speak, we ask you to speak clearly into the microphone, and please share your name and your mailing address as part of your testimony. Each side, those speaking in favor and those speaking opposed, will have 10 minutes to present for each side, and the time will be divided among all the people wishing to speak. Finally, all the motions this evening will be stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Alturk? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Present. Commissioner Ghosh? Uh, Commissioner Ghosh has requested an excused absence. Um, Commissioner Bryan? And Commissioner Bryan has also requested an excused absence. Uh, Commissioner Satterfield? And the same with Commissioner Satterfield. You can't let them all go. <laughs> Commissioner Harris? I did not request. <laughs> uh, here. Um, Commissioner Hyman? Present. Chair Busby? Present. Commissioner Miller? Present. Commissioner Kinchin? Present. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Present. Commissioner Van? Present. Commissioner Gibbs? Present. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, if we could have a motion to uh, approve the three excused absences, that would be appreciated. So moved. Second. Um, moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Harris. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The motion passes. We will uh, next move to the approval of the minutes and the consistency statements from our December 12th, 2017 meeting. And I will note that uh, the staff has provided us the updated minutes. There was one motion that we have corrected in the minutes in front of you. Um, yes, uh, Chair Busby, um, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. Actually, on page um, four of seven, it was a consistency statement for Lumley Road had to be uh, corrected. We had a couple of words that were left out that should have been in there. So Great. we've done that. That's in the minutes you have before you. Great. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes where the updated minutes and the consistency statement. Second. Great. Moved by Commissioner Harris, seconded by Commissioner Hornbuckle. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The motion passes. We'll move to adjustments to the agenda. Any adjustments, Ms. Smith? Uh, staff has no adjustments or recommends no adjustments. And we can affirm that all legal notice requirements have been met and are on file in the planning department affidavits for such are also on file. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, accept the motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Harris, seconded by Commissioner Al Turk. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The motion passes. Uh, we will move to our first public hearing this evening. This is case A17-00012 and a concurrent zoning case Z17-0031. This is for 3404 Page Road. And we will start with the staff report. Good evening, Jamie Sonyak with the Planning Department. I will be presenting case number A17-0012, Z17-0031. This is uh, 3404 Page Road. The applicant is um, Robert Schunk from Stewart. The property is located within the city's jurisdiction pending annexation. The site acreage is 32.827. The proposal is to rezone the site to allow for 190 townhouse units. <clears throat> the rezoning is from rural residential to planned development residential 5.788. And the FLOM request is uh, industrial FLOM to low medium density residential um, four to eight dwell units per acre. The site is located within the suburban tier and within the Noose River Basin. Residential is the uh, pr predominant uses surrounding the area. The Beth Page Residential Subdivision is located to the south and to the west. To the north is the Rural Residential Zone, one of uh, which of the properties includes a cemetery which fronts on Page Road. That property has not been included as part of the rezoning and plan amendment request, but it is included as part of the annexation case. To the east is warehouse and commercial uses located within the Wake County jurisdiction. The subject site is just north of the Pulitzer Lane intersection with Page Road. This is the existing conditions map. Uh, there are a number of existing structures and driveways which are proposed to be removed uh, in the event that the request is approved. There are isolated wetlands um, found within the property, an existing pond um, to be drained. A uh, stream of the Noose River extends into the property from the adjacent lot to the west. And uh, north of the stream buffer, is an immature pine forest, as well as other areas of cleared um, understory trees. And uh, south of the stream is mixed hardwood pine forest. Um, this is the uh, existing and proposed flaw map. The property is highlighted in red. Uh, as you can see on the left, the property is currently designated an industrial flaw, and the applicant is proposing to change the designation to low medium density residential which would be consistent with the rezoning request. The context map shown here also has the property shown highlighted in red. Um, the existing zoning is rural residential and the applicant is proposing to change the zoning to planned development, res uh, planned development residential 5.788. This request has been reviewed by staff and determined to be consistent with the requirements of the Unified Development Code. In terms of um, the requested district, again, the site is uh, 
sorry, that's a typo. The site is 32.827 acres. The density is 5.788 dwelling units per acre. Maximum pervious coverage is 60%. Uh, tree coverage, 20%. Maximum height is 35 feet. And the open space requirement is 16%. The development plan, and I should say that the, the property meets the, the PDR district requirements in terms of density, maximum impervious coverage, tree coverage, building height, and open space requirements. The proposed development plan, which is shown here, shows the access points, the building and parking envelope, the tree preservation areas, the riparian buffers, and the project boundary buffers. In terms of summary of commitments, the, um, the dwelling units will be townhomes. There will be a 20-foot planted buffer located along the southern and western property lines. A bicycle lane and sidewalk will be provided along Page Road. There are other associated roadway improvements, um, design and graphic commitments. In terms of consistency with the comprehensive plan policies, it is currently, the, the site is currently industrial farmed and not consistent with the low density residential. Um, we have found that in terms of zoning map changes, it is consistent with policies 2.13D, 2.22B. It is um, contiguous with other residential developments and compatible with the surrounding uses. There is sufficient infrastructure in place to support the development. The proposed development is consistent with 8.14D, since they are committing to additional asphalt uh, to account for the future bicycle lane. And there is uh, sufficient infrastructure uh, to support the site in terms of the school children generated from the development. Staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Okay. So we'll now move to open the public hearing. And at the moment, we have one individual signed up to speak, Robert Schunk. And if anyone else would like to speak, you can Sorry. let us know. Uh, good evening, Commissioners, uh, com com uh, Commissioner Busby, fellow Commissioners. My name is Robert Schunk. I live at 2627 University Drive here in Durham. I'm um, here representing uh, Shenandoah Homes this evening. Um, thanks to Jamie for a good, present, good opening presentation. Um, I pulled the zoning atlas to give a larger context to uh, you know, our project in relationship to uh, the area, uh, as you can see, to the you know our project is is identified there, and the Bethpage communities to the south and west, uh, to the north, you know, are some smaller parcels that also abut the uh, the Bethpage community. Um, you know, this gives a little more zoomed in um, layout as well, uh, a view of uh, both communities side by side. We will be connecting, as Jamie said, to the uh, community right here to the south. Um, this, uh, this community also has future connections north and south up here for uh, whenever that gets developed, as well as to, you know, the north and west as well. Um, this is an enlargement of our development plan, and I'll speak to this a little bit more with some notes that I have. Um, as Jamie said, we were requesting the land use plan change from industrial to low medium density residential, as Beth Page did. Um, meetings that had occurred with planning staff that's, you know, stated that this was not as a desirable industrial land, so that the request was, was suitable. Uh, we we're requesting a 5.78 yeah, units per acre for up to 90, 190 townhomes. Just to give some further context, the Creekside at Beth Page is owned at PDR 4.77. And when you do the math to the 283 acres, it's roughly 13, a little over 1,300 acres, or 1,300 units, excuse me. Um, 
we're 33 acres. Their uh, their community is about 283, and when I did the math, we're about 11 percent, adding about 11 percent more area to that project. Um, so with the road connectivity, you know, it's almost you know this community we're proposing almost acts, acts as an extension of of Bethpage. Um, we did have a, a neighborhood meeting back in August. Uh, we had about 50 residents, uh, neighbors, uh, attend that meeting. Um, some of them are here this evening. Um, there were several issues discussed. Connectivity, um, noted here at the bottom, the, uh, having a, providing a buffer, um, price of townhomes, are we keeping the pond, removing the pond? But the main focus of the evening uh, boiled down to a buffer uh, between our community and, and their community. Um, you know, while there's no community, there's in looking at the site plan of that page, there's no buffers provided within that community. Um, you know, we did uh, by the end of the evening, uh, we did proffer to give a uh, provide a 20 foot project boundary buffer along the southern and um, western edge, as depicted here in the development plan. Um, as you may know, uh, when a PDR is adjacent to a PDR, buffers are not required by the ordinance. Um, when they developed their uh, plan, uh, PDRs next to rural residential require a 10-foot buffer. So the aggregated buffer here will be a 30-foot uh, project boundary buffer between their 10-foot and our 20. Um, we will, uh, while Bethpage consists of single-family homes and uh, some townhomes, we, this, our development will consist of all of townhomes. Um, actually, I wanted to back up one point I skipped over. Um, when you uh, look at the, our proposed density and the unit count and the acreage of the size, and when you look at the projects together, while we're 5.8 units an acre and Bethpage is about 4.8 acres, when you combine that together, it gets you maybe to about uh, 4.8, 4.9 units per acre, to where it balances that out. Uh, all road improvements are being provided along the front edge, and basically we're extending the three-lane widening section in front of Bethpage further north. Uh, we are providing a sidewalk. There, there's a cemetery in the northeast corner and a lot of the headstones are almost within about 10 feet of the edge of pavement. Um, we're required to dedicate 25 feet of right of way, so there's no room to put the sidewalk in front of the cemetery, so we'll be uh, moving that around to the rear uh, with a public easement to, to allow north and south, north-south traffic. Um, we are, uh, we, I did speak to planning today, and we're looking to add a proffer that um, a couple of proffers, or one proffer and, and a revision to one of the design commitments. Um, the text here before you is that the developer commits to a minimum offset of 16 inches with two offsets per every building of four units to avoid rep repetitious placement. And the other request is, the other thing we're providing is that we're gonna remove the use of vinyl siding. Um, driving through Beth Page, it's all hardy plank material, so removing the vinyl, this would be more of a consistent material with their, with their neighborhood. And that completes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who did not get a chance to sign up who would like to speak on this particular case? Seeing none, we will move to close the public comment period, and I will ask any commissioners if they would like to speak or ask any questions. Our two lonely commissioners down on the end. <laughs> we'll start with Commissioner Al Turk. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thanks, Robert, for that presentation. I just I had a couple of minor questions. Um, so I assume you're. Or are you going to build any townhomes north of the stream? Is, is yes, you are. Okay. Yes. So and and so there'll be a way to connect those to the ones to the south. That yeah. is correct. Okay. And so, so and then you have three site access points. Um, and I guess not knowing where the townhomes will be. I mean, do you anticipate which will be the main entrance, or will you try to push for that to be on you know from Page Road or just so that 
I assume that's a concern maybe for some of the residents of, uh, of Beth Page. But. The, the, the main entrance will certainly be from Page Road. Okay. Uh, there'll be entry monumentation there and, and, uh, uh, and to announce the neighborhood right. and by ordinance we're required to connect to Anthology uh, and then we're connected to the north um, per the ordinance as well. So if and when the development to the north is developed, there's a connection there. We could not connect to the west um, because there's not a connection already provided there. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just another quick question in regards to the, um, to the pro uh, proffered buffer. So um, what, how, what exactly would that look like in regards to are those shrubberies or is it just the, the, the setback essentially? What would that, what would so that look it'll, like? So it'll be a 20% uh, or a, it'll, it'll be a 20-foot uh, point 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 four opaque buffer. Some of it will be preserved and some of it will be planted. Uh, if anybody of you have driven through uh, the neighborhood, um, the Beth Page neighborhood, it doesn't have the most kind topo, mm -hmm. nor does this site. So where we are able to preserve um, vegetation, we certainly will uh, cost the developer less money. Um, what we want to avoid is, you know, creating also, you know, some mohawks of, you know, narrow buffers as well. It, it, uh, is there a, a height range or something when you for this buffer? Uh, the, the the height range will meet the what the UDO calls for. Right. So it'll be a mix of uh, overstory trees, evergreen overstory, evergreen understory. Gotcha. Mix of shrubs as well. And one follow up in regards to that to the the question that my my peer here regarding the uh, access from the north of the the stream to the, the southern part. What would how would that look? Uh, have you contemplated what that, how that access point, or those access access points will? So um, while we haven't, you know, certainly finalized any plans, I mean, the idea would be, um, you know, likely making a, a connection this way. Um, so somewhere in here there'll be a connection, and I mean, this is not wide enough. So I mean, not so wide. So you'll, it's not like you have a big street network here. You'll likely have one east-west street with two cul-de-sacs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is too narrow to get through. Um, you know, we have a sore connection down here where there's an existing manhole, so we have to get that to that as well. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for staff really quickly. When I look at the uh, future land use map uh, as depicted in the staff report, the <clears throat> area that uh, um, to the east of Page Road up to the Wake County line is not colored in. Can I assume from that that that's uh, outside the jurisdiction of Durham City County and it's in Wake County jurisdiction? That is correct. All right, thank you. That helps. Uh, and then when I drove out there today, um, I noticed that uh, that what seems to be happening, the trend for development in the area is, tends to be towards this uh, uh, low medium density residential in spite of our future land use maps designation for future industrial and of course uh, in other cases especially on the eastern side of town here I've been a little con concerned about the kind of confused relationship between uh, our industrially uh, designated land and our residential land in the future land use map and so for because of those concerns and to the extent that this one property uh, tends to uh, move in the direction I think is is correct for the area. I'm inclined to support the plan amendment and the rezoning. Uh, I, it would be great, quite frankly, if we could go ahead and fill in that whole notch that is created by the uh, existing residential neighborhood and Page Road and, and get it all uh, redesignated and rezoned all the way up to kind of at least to the top of the notch there so that we have a cohesive residential area. Uh, I uh, met with the developers and asked them uh, for the design commitment proffer that they made today, and I appreciate very much you making that. I think it's a big deal. Uh, while we have a close uh, similarity in density uh, in, this, in this property, I think having some uh, design uh, 
connection, especially with materials, uh, will help since there is a form change between single family homes and, and townhouses. I think that'll make this fit in better with the neighborhood that it's clearly going to exist with. I'm assuming that uh, five years after uh, you guys have sold the last unit and move out, uh, people who drive through there will have a very small sense of whether or not these are two separate developments, and I think that's a desirable thing. So I intend to vote in favor of this, and I appreciate your cooperation. And I'm sorry I sound so funny. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Gibbs. Funnier than usual. I just have a couple of quick comments. I, <clears throat> one, I, I want to commend the developer for the extra 10 feet of uh, buffer. That was a very generous settlement, I think. Uh, and this could be for staff and any other, uh, any other submittal that comes in. I've been trying to, to read the contours, which is yellow on white. Even with my magnifying glass, it's really hard. So anytime anybody uh, submits a colored map, well, you can't beat good old black on white. Uh, I, and, I, and this is a, a serious request. Uh, it does make it a lot easier to to follow <clears throat> the the lay of the land. Sometimes I can tell you more than a visit to the site, uh, but that's uh, that's my request, and I I intend to support this. Thank you, Commissioner Gibbs. Any other commissioners who wish to speak on this item? And before we move forward with the motion, I just want to check in with staff on the, the proffers. These have uh, been cleared with the staff. Yes, Jamie Sonyak with the planning department. We have reviewed the two proffers and um, find them acceptable. I also just wanted to add uh, if the applicant can provide the approximate stream buffer, I'm sorry, stream crossing location on the development plan map uh, moving forward, that is a UDO requirement. Thank you very much. Thank you. At this point, I'll entertain a, a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that with regard to case A17-00012, the uh, comprehensive plan amendment request, that we send this forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation, uh, including the two proffers that were put forward today with regard to design issues, and also uh, with the understanding that between now and the time the City Council makes a final decision, oh, strike that, that's a zoning matter. I'll hold that. With regard to the, app, the plan amendment case, send it forward just like it is with a uh, favorable recommendation. Second. Great. Uh, moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Hyman. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 10 to 0. Great. Ask for news. And we'll move to the approval or motion on the zoning case. Mr. Chairman, because I've already rehearsed my motion on this inadvertently, I'd like to move that we send case Z17-00031 uh, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation with the understanding that the request uh, contain the two design proffers that were made tonight and that the uh, development plan also be amended to show the uh, approximate location of the stream buffer crossing uh, that the staff says is required. Second. Great. Practice makes perfect. Moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Alturk. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries 10 to 0. Great. Thank you very much. We'll move to our next case. This is also a future land use map and zoning case concurrent. This is a case A17-0014 and Z17-0036, the park at South Point 2. And we'll start with the staff report.
Good evening, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Uh, the two items before you um, are a, a future land use map amendment and zoning map change request for the park at South Point 2. Um, this is a request uh, submitted by Mr. Robert Schunk with Stuart. Um, this is in the city of Durham's jurisdiction. Um, the subject site is approximately 41 and a half acres, and the applicant is requesting a maximum of 55,000 square feet for vehicle sales and service areas. Uh, specifically, the rezoning request is to rezone um, opposite institutional, residential, suburban, multifamily, and commercial general all with a development plan to commercial general with a development plan, as well as modify the future land use map from the office and medium density residential designations to a commercial designation. Um, the subject site is highlighted in red in front of you. Um, this is the general area is located just a bit north of Interstate I-40, um, and it is also one will find NC-751 to the west as well as NC-54 to the north and east of the subject site. As you can see, the area is presently um, undeveloped. Um, there is, you can see some auto use um, areas to the south of the subject site. Um, existing conditions, um, as I noted, the subject site presently contains three different zoning designations as well as a stream which traverses part of the property. Maybe a little hard to see on the screen, um, but it is located right there. Um, adequate buffers are shown for that stream. Um, the future land use map for this area, uh, as I noted, um, and as you can see on the left-hand side, the site is designated as both office and med medium density residential, um, and the applicant is requesting to unify that to a commercial designation um, as you can see in this area, um, commercial is, I would say, at least in this inset, probably the predominant use, um, especially along the stretches of I-40. Um, as you go north, um, you get into some more residential areas with some additional commercial area as you go north along in C-751. The zoning context map, um, a lot of colors here. Um, the, the subject site is still highlighted in red and white. Um, as you can see, the, this kind of green, blue dotted area to the north, um, that indicates area that is um, all, either owned or maintained by the Army Corps of Engineers, um, and therefore is unlikely to be developed. It's basically um, wetlands or bottomlands. Uh, the requested zoning district, um, the applicant is requesting the CG district. Um, the ordinance requires a minimum of 20,000 square feet for this use. Um, a maximum of 60% of building coverage, um, a minimum, um, excuse me, please write the tree coverage area, and that, that information is incorrect, but the maximum height of 50 feet is correct. Um, so proposed conditions for the subject site. Um, as I noted, the applicant is requesting to use the site for vehicle sales and services. Um, the key areas here, um, is where this will be located. As I noted, the stream on the subject site is buffered um, and no development is proposed in that area. Um, summary of some additional commitments. Um, the applicant is committed to not having any outdoor PA system paging. Um, the permanent closure of Johnson Victory Circle. Um, so I'm gonna hop back to the development plan. Um, we'll go to the... The aerial map, you can see there is some pavement here. There is a street. It's not been, it, it was dedicated as public right away, but it was never accepted for maintenance by the city. Um, so the applicant is proposing to close that street. Um, if they can speak more about that, I believe they intend to use it as a private street, uh, but the intent is for that not to be maintained by the city of Durham. Uh, required project boundary buffers are also shown on the development plan, as well as the site access points. Um, so, some comprehensive plan policies um, that staff reviewed as part of this request. Um, as I noted, the, the plum category, it is not currently consistent, which is why the applicant is requesting to change that to commercial. Uh, but otherwise, staff found that this request was consistent with the comprehensive plan policies. So, in summary, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have at this time.
Thank you very much. Thank you. At this point, we'll open the public comment period. At the moment, we have two speakers signed up, Mr. Ken Spaulding and Mr. George Stanziel, both in favor. So collectively, have 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Good evening. My name is Ken Spaulding, 7913 Leonardo Drive here in Durham. Uh, we are seeking a plan amendment and rezoning of our property from a mixture of uses to, uh, of office and multifamily to commercial. This property is immediately adjacent to our currently existing auto park. In essence, we are seeking to expand our current footprint this will help provide an additional opportunity for both our auto park and our city to obtain a new dealership, the Volvo dealership. This will enhance our tax base and provide for new jobs. These office and multifamily parcels have remained dormant for over a decade. Our proposal is flanked by our auto park to the south and significant Army Corps of Engineer property to the north. And you've seen uh, from the map there uh, multifamily to the east. Our proposal lowers traffic and school enrollment. Staff has presented their favorable review. We are consistent with our city's plans and policies as laid out by your staff uh, this evening and as contained in your staff report. We thus, thusly respectfully request your support as well, which will allow this vacant and overgrown property to be put to its best use and consistency as aforementioned. Thank you for your consideration and George Stangiel, our land planner, will be our next presenter. Thank you. I'll stop it. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll try to be very quick. George Stanziel, uh, President and Director of Design at Stewart. What I wanted to do is just give you a little bit of background because this was zoned so many years ago, and just kind of tell you how we got here. Uh, the, the original uh, concept for this project was always to be an auto park uh, and was contemplated to be a high-end auto park. Um, the project was zoned in 2002 to include mix, a mix of uses that included hotel, office, resi and residential, as well as auto dealerships. At the strong Ooh. urging of interim planning director, of the inter interim planning director at the time, this was kind of all going on when all of South Point was kind of being rezoned and designed and master planned and so forth, and there was a lot of focus on mixed use. The result, uh, this resulted in parcels, the, the parcels that we're discussing tonight, being multifamily residential and uh, in the northeast corner and O and I in the sort of the central part of the site. And the, the image that, I, that are, is before you is sort of the original master plan uh, for this site. So you see the, the orange buildings kind of in the middle that, are, that were O and I, and then the residential portion to the upper right-hand corner. If you're familiar with this location, you know that there's very limited visibility to any major uh, thoroughfare which has resulted in little to no interest in developing these parcels under the current zoning. So 751 uh, is where the Lexus dealership is today. Many of you have gone by there. That, that's, that's basically our visual window. So these parcels to the back are, are very, you know, very hidden essentially for retail, uh, particularly for retail or uh, hotel and office uses. In addition, Soils and subsurface conditions on these parcels, the, the parcels that we're rezoning, have made development that is on these parcels have made development that requires substantial foundations extraordinarily difficult and expensive. So we've had many people look at it and have walked away. Um, this project has been developed with the highest level of design, including extensive landscape along the right of way, uh, along the parkway. Uh, and particularly on the Johnson Lexus site. Nearly $500,000 was spent on landscape and stone walls along the 751 frontage, which set the tone for the rest of the project. And then there's a substantial amount of landscape that has been installed all the way along the parkway. While this project somehow weathered the recession, the retail and auto landscape in, in South Durham has changed with the addition of the Hendrick Auto Mall south of South Point Mall. That project, was a perfect opportunity to include in this project um, uh, and in, in allowing us to keep 
auto dealerships from lining our major streets. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way uh, for a variety of different reasons. Mr. Johnson now wants to build out his project in the way that it was originally intended. It will be done as we started it with quality landscape treatments and state-of-the-art lighting, signage, and architecture. This project is adjacent to I-40 to the south, Corps of Engineers to the north, uh, and very limited residential in the northeast corner, the closest single-family home, which there is one, uh, as well as a church parking lot, is some 250 feet away and is buffered by a jurisdictional stream buffer. We are adding an additional 50-foot undisturbed buffer and our property adjacent to that. So that is a total of about 300 feet. We have also committed, uh, after some discussions, that between now and City Council, that we will, uh, at City Council, proffer uh, a buffer, an additional a, a buffer enhancement uh, with evergreen planting uh, for a limited length. We, we'll work with planning on the location and language prior to the City Council hearing. One last note, during the original rezoning of this project, which uh, changed, you know, the original zoning of this, the very original zoning of this project was 1,250 residential units. Uh, when, we, when we rezoned the property, Mr. Johnson uh, uh, committed to paying the city's portion of the pedestrian bridge going over I-40. Uh, in the amount of $250,000, which we, we all sort of enjoy today. So uh, he's made a major commitment there, and we now want to finish this project after many years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during the public comment period? Seeing none, I will move to close the public comment period. I will note that we did get an email sent to us earlier today from a resident, and I'm trying to look up their their name, but they um, they had raised concerns. Mr. Wiggins had sent this along to us, and I just did want to mention it for the record. Uh, Mr. Mark Roden had some concerns about the lighting issues, but could not be here this evening, so did send his comments in advance. Uh, let me open it up for the Planning commissioners, anyone on the commission who'd like to speak? We'll start with Commissioner Gibbs, Commissioner Miller. <clears throat> Again, I just have a couple of comments. Uh, and one has to do with, uh, I'm not really, I don't think I understand that the semicircular drive, is that going to stay in? It's called, uh, Johnson Victory Circle? It, it will, the right of way is to be closed, but the pavement and the access will, will remain. Um, right now, the auto park is, South Point Auto Park Boulevard is a public right of way. Uh, that was intended to be a public right of way, but uh, um, the, the decision's been made to, uh, a decision's been made to, to just to turn it into private. So, so it can be utilized by the dealership. Yes, sir. At access to yes, sir. car displays and all. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I, that was really the only thing. Everything else looks really good. And I, the first thing I thought of was just what you said, George, <clears throat> about the, uh, the dealership down Fayetteville Road. I'm glad to see this come back. This, from its inception, I think was a good idea. <clears throat> and this is the first time I've seen uh, a layout of what was intended. Uh, I really like the concept, and for any other developer, and for you and anybody else that may be looking, I think I could find something else better to watch on TV, but in fact, there's a ball game on that I'd like to be watching, but <laughs> I do like the use of vegetation throughout wherever the cars are parked. This is, this is something that I would like to see, if not added to the UDO, uh, that we pay special attention to. It helps reduce the, uh, 
the the heat islands that can occur with all of the the paving, uh, and this this rule of thumb can be applied to not only car lots but to shopping center lots. Uh, it's been used in other places, but I. I'd like to see more of it. It softens everything. Uh, but anyway, I, I won't take up any more time. That's just something that jumped out at me, and I wanted to put that out in the public realm and the staff realm and our realm. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Commissioner Gibbs. Commissioner Miller? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> in general, I... I have to say, I have uh, only been along uh, the parkway that runs through this project a couple of times because for the reasons that you said there, unless you're buying a car, not much reason to do it. And unless you're buying a Lexus, there's, uh, until they put the Honda dealership in, there was no reason at all. Uh, but it is quite lovely, uh, and it's time, I suppose, to build it out. I can understand the developer's frustration over the years uh, to have planned one thing and not been able to realize it. Um, uh, uh, I also like the idea that uh, that we can have automobile dealerships in this sort of setting, rather than uh, the along the major highway. Uh, it's also, in my opinion, an ideal use for the uh, strip of property that separates a major uh, arterial uh, from the Corps of Engineers land. Now, having said all of that, and I've expressed this concern to the developers. Uh, I note that we have two existing residential areas that uh, when the original project went through thought they were going to have residential neighbors and are now going to have uh, pretty intense commercial neighbors. Uh, and so I have expressed that concern to the developers and uh, am grateful that they are willing to work on a proffer to do supplemental screening. I don't think it's exactly right to call it a boundary buffer because it's not what we're talking about but some additional planting uh, where the graded area of these properties come close to these, the proper residential property to the north and the residential property to the east uh, to assist with screening the uh, auto dealerships from those residences, especially in the winter months. If you drove like I did up through Tudor Place and stand in that cul-de-sac and look over the house there and across this property, you can see way into uh, into the property. And so a little bit of additional screening, I think, will be a welcome thing uh, and make the, the neighbor relationship between the residences and the uh, auto park uh, a happier one. So having said that, and with gratitude to the developer for listening to my concerns, I'm going to vote in favor of this plan amendment and resume. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, um, a number of my uh, thoughts have been articulated, uh, uh, particularly by Commissioner Miller. Uh, I'm, I'm inclined to, to support this, and uh, I understand that with time comes, like, we evolve and what, what our thoughts and visions are. And so the idea of a mixed-use development probably made sense, or we were trying to start some kind of momentum. But when I think about, well, I'm very familiar with this area, and I drove it two or three times in the past couple days. But the notion of there's nothing there really as as is stated, but the idea of just like when you go and shop for furniture, furniture, you have multiple furniture stores so that people can actually have do their comparison shopping and they don't have to be on the road going to different places. I think this is an opportunity to do this for automobiles. So I don't know how many or what the ultimate mix of uh, mm -hmm. automobile dealers and suppliers that will be a part of this, but I think that there's, that's a way to get more warm bodies up in this area. And the, uh, the concern that Commissioner Miller raised in regards to the lighting was what I was my only major concern when I went and actually drove back to the residential community on the backside. It's like, well, I like at nighttime, I like for my environment to be dark, but there will be lighting. And so I don't know to what degree that will assuage the concerns of the uh, residents that highlighted this particular issue. But, you know, from an economic development standpoint of, of this site has been dormant for a decade or, so, uh, or more from what I've learned, is that 
I don't think that there's nothing that can be compelled upon the developer to make residential come to this particular parcel. When I asked um, Mr. Spalding, when I had a conversation with him, why can't we get residential on this site? And that was the question of the, the soil and the, uh, the rock under the ground. I don't know, unless the city ponies up money to do the remediation, I don't think that that's going to be like a viable option to force the or compel the, the developer to do it. So I think that this alternative uh, request makes sense for what's there and what can be put there. And so with that, I'll uh, support this. Thank you. Commissioner Al Turk. Thank you, Chair. This is a, a question for staff. If this rezoning does go through, will there be a sliver of office between this parcel and the parcel to the south? Or am I seeing something? There's a on page. Amendment three. Mm -hmm. Jacob Wiggins of the Planning Department. Um, yeah, what you're seeing there, the, the future land use map, um, that little sliver is in the public right of way. Um, so by ordinance, um, that will be updated. So if this were approved, you would see commercial in that entire area. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I move that we send case A17-000144 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Moved by Commissioner Miller and seconded by Commissioner Hornbuckle. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes 10 to 0. Thank you. And the zoning case? With regard to case... Uh, Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I recommend that we send case 17-000364 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation with the understanding that between now and the time the case gets to the, uh, the City Council that the developer will work with the staff on a plan to add supplemental vegetative screening in the areas on the property closest to uh, the existing residential neighbors. Second. A move by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Hornbuckle for case Z17000036. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes 10 to 0. Great. Thank you very much. And we'll move to our final case this evening. This is a zoning map change only. This is case Z17000029 for Arrington 2. And we'll start with the staff report. Good evening, Jamie Sunyak with the Planning Department. This is case number Z170029. <clears throat> the um, Planning Commission members have been provided with a short memo regarding this application. I have not prepared a formal PowerPoint presentation. Um, my comments will be brief. The, the applicant um, has applied uh, basically because they were seeking revisions to design commitments uh, for the Arrington 2 um, site. The property is, the entire track is about 95 acres of land located on the east side of Page Road um, in the southeastern portion of Durham, just way west of Wake County boundary. The um, city council approved a zoning map change and development plan for the area in January 2011, which was legacy um, case Z09000015. And that essentially changed the zoning for that area to be mixed use with a development plan. It allowed for um, a mixture of office, retail, commercial, along with um, residential dwelling units. A number of site plans have been approved for that area, um, including 200 square foot office building, multifamily apartment complex. Um, those are noted within the memo. The applicant, uh, Jay Davis, is um, currently requesting some minor revisions to the design commitments, essentially to better differ differentiate 
the type of architectural materials used from the residential and the non-residential um, buildings. And additional clarification has been provided to identify what materials would be used to address the scale of the buildings, um, the main entrances of the buildings, and the main entry points. There are no other changes to the development plan. Per um, the Unified Development Ordinance, any revisions to um, design commitments are, con considered, are considered a significant change and require um, new hearing and recommendation from the Planning Commission, essentially why we're here today, and ultimately um, adoption or approval by the City Council. Uh, staff has reviewed the changes to the design commitments, and they are found to be uh, consistent with the UDO requirements. Um, the staff report provides the context map, the um, legacy case development plan, the aerial map, and the current development plan that's proposed, um, as well as the application. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. If we could, it would be great to see the list if anyone signed up sure. to testify. We will open the public comment period. And no one has signed up. We'll give the opportunity to speak. If you'd like to speak, please approach the microphone. And if you can share your name and address, and please speak clearly into the mic, then you can sign up when you're, when you're finished. Yeah, yes, please. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Jonathan Parsons. I'm with Jay Davis, um, 501 South Wilmington Street Raleigh, representing the applicant. Really just here to answer any questions on the development plan. As Jamie discussed, the whole reason for this text change is just to provide a little more flexibility in what we're doing for our client, which for the office building, their building, as well as maintaining continuity with the original development plan. So materials are staying generally the same. We've just expanded a little bit of the, the portfolio to allow some of the materials are distinct to our client, some stone, some metal panel, but we're still representing and honoring the original plan, so that's really why we're here tonight. So if there's any questions, I'm really just here to answer questions. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, you can fill that out and, and leave that, and some commissioners may have questions for you. We will close the public comment period and move to commissioners, if any commissioners would like to speak. We'll start with Commissioner Miller. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have to say that I read the memo and I heard the report. I'm still not sure what we're doing here. And I even had to get my magnifying glass out to try to read the, the old and new version of the development plan. Um, uh, and I'm not sure completely that I get it. So I would like to try to understand by asking uh, the applicant's representative a question or two. My okay. question is, what is it about the existing design commitments that uh, uh, prevents you from doing what you want to do? Um, or what is it that you need to add to the design commitments that permits you to, to do what you want to do in the future? Okay, so, so I they, take it you're, you're asking for this because you've got something specific in mind. Yes. So when the original case went forward, I will use the word the design guidelines or design commitments that were established were very prescriptive in terms of references to brick banding, types of brick detailing, brick color even. There was, it was too prescriptive to allow us to add in things. So I do like things like bird beaking, Flemish bond, different types of patterns. So our goal was to maintain brick masonry so we still have brick on the building. Um, we wanted to add metal panel that was not specifically listed in the design elements but because of the way the architecture has evolved in the area, we wanted to add that material. We also wanted to maintain our description of how the windows were being used. But again, it was a very broad term. I think the term was traditional windows. So we wanted to provide clarity on what those windows are to allow our building to go forward with the type of windows we're using versus a residential building, which is a, I use the air quotes, the traditional window. So we wanted to help provide clarity so that when we submit our elevations to this case planners, we didn't get confusions on our materials versus what we deemed as more residential, i.e. that type of brick detailing, which is 
we take the, the bird view because when you turn the brick 90 degrees or 45 well, certainly degrees. I understand. So those are things that fit more in that residential character versus a commercial building. So again, and I got a little confused when I was trying to sort this out all by myself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if we approve this, what will be the residential design commitments for for the project as opposed to uh, the non-residential design commitments? Because the, the, the report says it's to, to greater differentiate between mm -hmm. the two. So what we've done is we're pulling out the, we're doing a non-commercial project, we're doing a commercial project. So we've pulled out, the, the way the original wording was, it was all pushed together. So what we've done is we've basically outlined the commercial uses and pulled out residential paragraphs and that's part of the, the text change. We're making it clearer so that when our building goes forward, we're having these types of uses and any commercial building that comes forward will match to our commercial style. The residential character is maintained. The cementitious siding, the traditional windows, enhanced landscaping at the entries, all that stayed the same. We've just pulled it and repeated it in the second paragraph. We're trying to add clarity and conciseness in commercial versus residential. So, so anything that gets built will match the residential. Anything new commercial will tie into the commercial architecture. That was our goal. So as I read it, it looked like you were also wanting greater flexibility in com commercial form going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because again, with the tiny print that we get, uh, it looked like uh, the original plans kind of wanted the, the non-residential buildings to have a residential character. Is that right, or did I? That, that was part of the wording issue. It was not the intent. Mm -hmm. you, when, when we did the original planning for a previous client, it's always shown a large format office building at the site we're at, a office slash retail component to the left. It was a mixed use community. Now it's part of the challenge is when we were coming forward with other projects, that was tripping up the review. It was there wasn't clarity, so we're trying to help fix that with this texture. And so going forward, as pertaining the because you've got. Uh, what look like two distinct uh, residential projects on the property mm -hmm. today. That's correct. And they are not the same, but it looks like they are guided by the same standards. That's correct. <clears throat> and those stand standards going forward will continue with regard to residential construction. That's correct. Uh, but going forward, uh, your commercial standards will be more flexible and uh, any confusion that might have existed between the commercial stand or non-residential standards versus residential standards will be eliminated by greater division. And that, that was what the intent is of this change. That's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments by commissioners? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we can't send case Z-17 triple zero two nine four to the city council with a favorable recommendation actually didn't check it is the city council is that not right city council with a favorable recommendation second moved by commissioner miller seconded by commissioner al turk all those in favor please raise your right hand Great. the motion carries unanimously that is it for tonight's agenda. I do want to give staff an opportunity to give us any additional updates before we adjourn. Okay. Seeing none of good news is we are not meeting on Valentine's Day this year. So our regular meeting is the day before. I'll see you then. This, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now I got to remember.